Good morning. Welcome back to the Ambassadors Hour. This is your girl, Minister Asia. Today is Christmas Day number nine. We're birthing some things because nine is symbolic of birth. And we'll be discussing the Garden of Gethsemane experience as well as John 6, and 21 so all of the descriptions will be in the description box and if you're new to the ambassadors hour thank you so much brother and sister in Christ for giving this channel a chance if you will allow us to spread the gospel on all fit for hemispheres of the globe by sharing it out on all your social media platforms and clicking the like button commenting down below so that YouTube can recommend our channel to a plethora of people and get the gospel everywhere it needs to be well without further ado let's Let's go ahead and say our mantra tell you who we are and get into the contents of this video christmas day number nine birthing hey for i know who i am and whom did i stand whom empowers me to be i am an ambassador for christ and this is the hour to recognize me so we are a subsidiary of loving people by sharing christ loving people by sharing christ is the next dimension of your christian walk they are a christian support page designed to aid you in um your journey with jesus as you're walking with christ and you have questions cares concerns or you may need a little bit of encouragement uplifting prayer go on over to loving people by sharing christ on facebook it was founded by none other than my sister minister renata c mcfadden they're on loving people by sharing christ you can see memes gifts other graphical illustrations and depictions of the undying love of jesus christ and you can inbox your prayer requests and testimonies because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony honey so go to loving people by sharing christ yay today is christmas day number nine and the number nine is literally symbolic of birthing and jesus christ birthed our redemption plan when you're birthing according to john 16 21 a woman that is in travailing is in so much pain if you've ever bore a child or ever um, went through the miscarriage process where your body has to erupt a baby and has to um, go through that whole process of birthing the contractions, the feelings, the ache, the pain that you go through, it's agony, agony. But the Bible depicts that that sorrow only lasts for a little while because once you have that baby, the joy that comes with the thing that you give birth to, isn't that something? I think about our Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was praying, he knew his mission, he knew why he came. It was a very difficult decision for him to come because he had to endure and bore and birth forth all of our sorrows in order to transition to death go to hell get the keys back to death hell and the grave become resurrected on the third day and redeem all of mankind this was a huge feat a mighty feat f-e-a-t that he undertook just for us. And you can see how agonizing it was because when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was praying unto the father and he said, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. The Bible depicts that he was sweating, sweating, not bullets, but blood. Jesus Christ birthed us out in travail. He, tra he travailed for all mankind. And if you are a deathbed intercessor and or just an intercessor in general and you pray you understand how the burden is sometimes when you're birthing forth God's people and so I wanted to come to you today on the ambassador's hours Christmas number nine to let you know he really was a man of sorrows he was acquainted with grief he understood the birthing pains but when you get done giving birth to what God is doing in you in this season it may be a hard season it may be a barren season you may feel like you all by yourself you may feel as if nobody understands what you're going through that you feel like a weight a heaviness a travail but that is because god is birthing something through you in this hour and in this season and what he wants you to not do is get distracted don't get distracted by the cares of this world don't get distracted by people stuff or things but he wants you to look to the hills from which cometh your help because all your help comes from the lord just why do you think it's not by chance that he talks about midwives in the bible he talked about everybody giving birth 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 talked about Moses' birth and how he was Moses was a basket case too y'all how he was put in the basket and sailed up the Nile River it's just so much um stories about birthing when Samson not Samson I'm um, 
Samuel was birthed forth through Hannah. She even had to give him away to the prince, to the um priest. And she bore him. She wept in the temple and cried and travailed until God heard from heaven and birthed forth the next prophet. See, he didn't need to squash her and Penina's beef. He needed to birth forth a word. The word of the Lord was shut up in that hour and in that season. There were no open visions. There was no parchment paper Bibles like we have now. So he had to birth forth that. The Lord um, God Almighty had to birth forth Jesus because we needed a redeemer. We needed a kinsman redeemer to come through this, to bore our iniquities and our sins and our transgressions, even when nobody else don't want to pray with you. He, he got so upset with the disciples, like, can you watch for just one hour? But he went through this thing. He bore it. He sweat. And at the end of the thing, he had to make a decision. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So that's what we're going to have to do to give birth to the next dimension of our vision, next dimension of our dreams. We're going to have to say, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but your will be done. We are vastly approaching our destination. Let's go ahead and say some daily confessions, pray, and go on with our day. I decree and declare that I'm everything God says I am. I can have everything he says I can have. I will be everything he's predestined and ordained me to be. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. Greatness follows me everywhere I go. I increase in favor each and every day. God perfects that which concerns me. He's opening up doors of favor, grace, mercy, opportunity. I decree and declare that greatness is my destiny. I am the beloved of God, beloved above all things. He wishes that I may prosper and be in good health, even as my soul shall prosper. I decree and declare that God orders my steps. He directs my paths. He's opening doors of favor for me, even right now. Favor follows me. Favor ain't fair, but it sure feels fabulous. Lord God, bless and protect these ambassadors. Strengthen them where they're weak. Build them up where they're torn down. Mold and shake them into the men and women and children of God that you have called them to be, Lord God. Give them hope in any hopeless situation. Help them, Lord God, to know the end from the beginning. And give them peace, Lord God. And I ask, Lord God, if they don't know you, that you soften their heart and allow them to let you in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, it's been good riding with you this brief car vlog. Hope to see you tomorrow if it's the Lord's will. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please let him in your heart. And in the meantime, embrace and enjoy your journey. Goodbye for now.